Hi, my name is Roy Kim, um, Azure MVP, and this video will show a cost-efficient way of developing your Azure Kubernetes service environment. So um, these are my recommended configuration settings for those that are, you know, fairly new to um, AKS. Uh, you're on a kind of learning path and want to know what are the kind of the key settings um, and to be cost efficient. So um, let's go. So here in this uh, diagram um, that I built out are the um, various uh, Azure resources uh, that come into play with um, uh, with an AKS. With the Azure Kubernetes service, it's, it's, the, it's a managed um, container service. Okay, well, within it, uh, by default, uh, is a VM scale set versus just individual VMs. And they have to be attached to a virtual network. Okay, there needs to be a, a load balancer by default is public. And along with that, uh, in my setup, um, I, I like to enable uh, Azure AD rule-based access, managed identity, and Azure uh, Container Registry for pushing and pulling your uh, Docker images to be deployed into the AKS cluster. So this is what the general Azure resources that are come into play in my development environment. But let's talk about the main thing about this video is to discuss about the Azure CLI configuration settings in the AZ AKS command. So if you go to the, um, the documentation on AZ AKS create, okay, there are tons of parameters. As you can see, there's like 60 plus settings here and, and which one is most is suitable. So so let's go here and let me run through the kind of the parameters that I like to work with. Okay, so, you know, as of uh, now, December 2020, a Kubernetes version you can go with is 1.19. You can look up the available versions and go with the uh, uh, generally the latest or, or near latest. Okay, and you have to give the location parameter, of course. Uh, for myself, I use, use Canada Central as I'm located in Toronto. And the VM setup type, I go with the virtual machine scale sets because it's easy to or easier to scale out uh, and scale in on uh, uh, nodes. And to keep your cost down, uh, to work at a minimum, you can set a node count of one, uh, one VM. But in production, you would want at least three. Uh, the VM size, I choose the standard D2 uh, S3. Uh, this is about you know eight gigabytes of RAM, two virtual CPUs, and um, uh, this is optional. But uh, I generally like to generate SSH keys if you ever want to SSH into those those uh, VMs for any troubleshooting. I'd like to keep my OS disk size to uh, the minimal 30 uh, gigabytes, okay, to keep the cost down. And I like to uh, enable the uh, auto scaler, okay, um, so when there's more demand for resources such as CPU, um, it can uh, scale out um, to, uh, let's say, up to five. You can choose uh, your max however you like and I say it's uh, it's nice to have this and uh, to see that to see this working if it ever arises to deploy your docker images okay you would want to attach uh, an existing Azure container registry okay so this is kind of your your private container registry you can still deploy docker images from let's say public uh, registries uh, such as the uh, Docker Hub. I like to enable Azure AD for rule-based access um, so that uh, you can set certain users or Azure AD groups to have certain permissions to uh, like to administrate or to um, maintain or manage uh, various uh, Azure Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes cluster resources.
okay? Enable uh, managed identity, okay? So that uh, Kubernetes has an identity to uh, configure uh, Azure resources um, such as the load balancer or managed disk or you know other uh, Azure resources that it needs to have permissions to. Um, so by doing this, it's a, a simpler approach than you know creating an Azure AD you know app uh, client in and Azure AD uh, like server app. So next is the load balancer SKU. Um, you know, typically you want to go standard, but for a dev environment to keep costs down, for the time being, I say basic is enough. And uh, since this AKS um, service needs to be bound to a uh, VNet, um, you give it the subnet ID of an existing kind of Azure VNet subnet. Yeah, you, know, you can create AKS cluster where it'll create your own uh, virtual, uh, its own virtual network, and you can kind of skip uh, the, uh, this type of step. But I think it's it's a good practice, and it will be very uh, normal that as you work with um, you know other sophisticated dev environments or even production environments that there would be a shared VNet in place. So I'd highly recommend to use an existing VNet if there is one. Uh, it'll just reduce the clutter of you know uh, many having uh, many VNets. The network plugin is the is the Azure CNI plugin. So what this effectively does is that for um, for every uh, pod, uh, max number of pods, it reserves a uh, internal private IP address in the subnet for every uh, possible pod, right? Uh, based on a, a maximum, so that say the load balancer has direct access to um, each pod per a private IP address on the uh, subnet. Okay, a good max pods uh, number is thirty. So uh, again, um, with the private IP address. There would be 30 uh, reserved IP addresses on the subnet uh, multiplied by the number of nodes that are provisioned. And these are prepared upfront, even if there isn't 30 pods existing. So uh, next, I will show the script that uh, I have. And the link to the script will be in the uh, comments or the, in my description. As, uh, you can find the link to it. It will be in my uh, GitHub uh, repo. So here's my script, and and let's kind of uh, run through this, okay, as a demonstration. So first of all, you gotta kind of log in, um, you know, set the subscription that you want to work with, um, you know, some initial parameters like my the resource group that I want to create. Um, the kind of the AKS name, uh, the location. So let's go ahead and create this uh, resource group. Okay, that's done. Let's turn to my uh, Azure, the Azure portal. Okay, and here is uh, the resource group I just created, Linux, Linux demos. Okay, and I'll go back to my script. So let's create the Azure Container uh, Registry. Okay, whoops. So what I'm doing is create it, find the Azure Resource ID, um, update it such that uh, admin is enabled, uh, find the username and password uh, that's generated upon this new service. So I have here the username here and, and the password. Okay, so um, we can use that for future reference. Okay, uh, I'll create a, a virtual network into that uh, resource group. Okay, again, this can be done automatically uh, when you create uh, AKS service, but you know, I like to create uh, it separately and manage them um, kind of on its own and configure them, um, 
you know, specific things such as the address prefix and the subnet prefix. Okay, great. So that is created. Now, let's see here. So I have the subnet ID here, okay? But if there is a, rather than creating a VNet, if there is one that's existing, then you just have to try to find the uh, subnet ID. Okay, so, you know, these two lines, you know, you can leverage to find the uh, subnet ID, okay? Here I just uh, find the subnet ID of the the VNet that's in my research group, okay? And for reference purposes, so to, under, to look at the list of VM SKUs in my location, uh, to prepare to configure the VM SKU size, here you can find uh, various SKUs that you can copy and paste the third column, okay? So it's just uh, good to have. Uh, sometimes you don't know what those SKUs are off the top of your head. And before creating the AKS service, it's also recommended to find out what are the available versions. In, my, in the designated location in Canada Central, these are the uh, versions that's available, okay? I think new versions come out every few months and, um, and the older ones are, are you know, eventually you know, deprecated. Here is really the, my, the setup of the AKS service, okay? AZ AKS Create. So just like in the diagram that I showed previously, um, I set up the resource group name, the, the name of this AKS service, um, the Kubernetes cl uh, cluster version, 1.19.1, uh, the v node VM SKU size, VM set type as uh, virtual machine scale sets, OS this size of 30, node count of the, as one for one VM, with the uh, maximum number of pods per per node, which is uh, 30. Um, the network plugin is the Azure CNI, which again will create designate 30 private IP address for each for each node. Okay, and uh, based on that subnet ID of the virtual network that already exists, uh, this service will uh, attach to that. The, uh, create a load balancer a budget friendly one uh, SKU of basic, uh, generate SSH keys, uh, enable auto cluster. Uh, it's good to uh, know this for learning purposes. Enable Azure AD for RBAC. Uh, enable managed identity. Identity will be created so that it can use that uh, to have permissions to various like the load balancer and attach the Azure Container Registry given the existing kind of ACR uh, resource ID. So let's go ahead and I'll just select this and create this. Okay, uh, it is running. Okay, so now the uh, script or the uh, AKS command has finished creating. So let's turn over to the Azure portal and see what has happened. So uh, we created the, uh, the VNet um, beforehand in the container registry uh, right here and then the service, um, you know, kind of referenced uh, these two. Okay, and by clicking into the uh, AKS service, okay, let's take a look at its configuration. Let's look at the node pools. So there's one node pool, okay. Um, here's the uh, Kubernetes version as indicated, uh, Linux OS type, uh, one node count, and uh, the node size, the VM uh, size. So, here, uh, by clicking to the node, uh, we've enabled the auto scale, uh, minimum from one to five. So that looks good. Cluster configuration uh, indicates the uh, version. We've enabled the role-based 
um, access control, AKS, AKS managed Active Directory. Okay. Um, here we can add a AD group for uh, administrators um, and you can upgrade to uh, the next uh, version uh, cluster version that is and uh, for scaling it's no longer here but you do it through the node pool as I've shown uh, networking uh, the Azure CNI plugin okay load balancer is basic right uh, let's see here let's take a look at the um, virtual network okay and so as I mentioned with the Azure CNI uh, plugin we have about here 30 reserved internal IP addresses right for um, um, you know uh, designated for uh, 30 pods that can be created for each for that one node that's uh, been provisioned and if there was a second node that's been uh, created or through scale out um, the AKS service will um, create uh, will instruct the VNet uh, in, in the subnet to create the 30 more um, IP uh, addresses for uh, each pod so um, here in the cluster configuration, um, since we have role-based access enabled, um, we should set up um, the Azure AD groups the, that have or um, AKS admins. So here I created a, a group before um, Azure AD and uh, placed my, my, myself in here. So let's uh, set that up. Okay, hit save. Okay, and while this is being updated, then we're able to see the Kubernetes resources, um, such as the namespaces, workloads, um, uh, services, ingresses, storage, and configuration. So, so upon the setup of this uh, Azure Admin AD group, now we can uh, go to see Kubernetes resources, okay, that uh, my current login has um, access to. Okay, we can see the workloads. Uh, these are all out of the box services, storage, and configs, such as uh, config maps. Okay, so if we uh, go to Go back to the Azure CLI. We can uh, get the credentials, kind of the AZ AKS credentials, which will uh, update the uh, cube config file locally, and, and then we have access to on the command line with using kubectl uh, to see. Um, various resources so actually we need to do the uh, device login first okay get the code paste it next I'm in here so uh, we can start to qctl get name spaces QCTL top uh, nodes, uh, see its CPU and memory usage. And so in conclusion, i walked walk through uh, how to set up a dev environment in a cost efficient way uh, and to highlight the uh, various uh, parameters that I pay attention to, uh, what I would recommend in, in terms of its value. So you, this is helpful and uh, please uh, like and subscribe to see more videos uh, coming up. Thank you.